Now let's take a look how storage is configured and utilized within VMware Cloud Foundation. VMware Cloud Foundation provides flexible storage support for workload domains to satisfy a broad range of uh, customer application requirements. Now, Cloud Foundation uh, defines two categories of storage. The first is a principal storage. Now, principal storage is the storage type selected when creating a new uh, domain. During the initial deployment of a new Cloud Foundation instance, uh, the management domain is configured using one of three storage types. vSAN HCI is the recommended and uh, preferred uh, for use in the management domain, but alternatively, we do support NFS, uh, VMFS, and Fiber Channel. When additional workload domains or clusters are created, the customer is given several additional storage options uh, to choose from. Now again, vSAN is highly recommended. It can be deployed as a hyperconverged, a fully aggregated vSAN HCI arrangement or a disaggregated arrangement using vSAN storage clusters. Workload domains can also be configured using NFS, uh, VMFS, or Fiber Channel. Having the flexibility to choose from a selection of different storage types allows customers to leverage the existing investments in storage hardware while also providing an easy on-ramp uh, to move those workloads and applications to vSAN when they are ready. Now, supplemental storage is the second type that is defined by Cloud Foundation. While principal storage is used when configuring a workload domain or cluster, supplemental storage can be used to add storage capacity to any domain or cluster, including a management domain. Supplemental storage options certainly include vSAN storage clusters, vSAN remote uh, data stores, NFS options, uh, as well as VMFS and Fiber Channel. Uh, VMFS on iSCSI, uh, NVMe over Fiber Channel, and now NVMe over uh, TCP. Now, it's important to point out that adding and scaling any storage type other than vSAN is a manual process, just as it would be in a traditional environment using hardware-based storage solutions. When vSAN is not used, the customer is responsible for maintaining uh, server firmware and drivers and so forth. If a customer is using VMFS on Fiber Channel, it's, Im it's important that they also check the HCL uh, for uh, the Fiber Channel Array and HBA uh, compatibility. What we can see here is the different types of storage options available within a VCF deployment and their respective capabilities. Using vSAN provides the customer with a full software-defined solution. It's flexible, it's quick to configure, and it's easy to manage and change at a per workload level using our storage policy-based framework. vSAN can be configured for aggregated storage using vSAN HCI or disaggregated storage using vSAN storage clusters, which was previously known as vSAN Max. Storage policy-based management removes the need for manual hardware configuration and a potential disruption when inevitable changes are needed later uh, down the track. vSAN also allows for really easy scaling, allowing you to add compute and storage uh, together when it's needed without the need to plan up front for large capital expenditures. Um, but it also allows full lifecycle managed um, patching, uh, upgrading, and so forth. Uh, Cloud Foundation supports stretch clusters when using vSAN, uh, both in the original storage architecture and the vSAN Express storage architecture. Administrators can also uh, configure multiple remote uh, clusters using vSAN, NFS, VMFS, and Fiber Channel. It's for these reasons why VMware highly recommends using vSAN for VMware uh, Cloud Foundation. Now, uh, traditional three-tier architectures have been powering data centers for many years, but have been hampered by some fundamental limitations of that architecture. And this includes the use of proprietary hardware and the need for special teams to manage the very specific aspects of that architecture. Now, a hyper-converged architecture can remove some of those uh, dependencies from the hardware feature sets. By abstracting these features away from the underlying hardware, you can address and apply the right settings in the right way for each workload running in the data center. 
as organizations are looking for interoperability with other public and private cloud investments, being able to apply these settings in a really granular way using software is quickly turning into a requirement. With the addition of uh, vSAN storage clusters, you have the additional flexibility of being able to scale, compute, and storage independently using the very same software and the very same management. Now in 2022, the introduction of vSAN 8 introduced a revolutionary vSAN Express storage architecture or vSAN ESA. This was our next generation storage architecture written specifically for modern high performance hardware uh, that not only delivers unprecedented levels of performance and efficiency, but allows us to introduce new capabilities that frankly weren't uh, possible under the original storage architecture. With vSAN ESA, you can easily choose uh, one of two deployment options as shown on the screen. Now an aggregated vSAN HCI cluster uh, or the disaggregated vSAN storage cluster. No matter what you choose, the vSAN Express storage architecture unlocks the capabilities of modern hardware to allow the workloads of today and uh, tomorrow to perform as the hardware allows. The tremendous efficiency of vSAN means that it can run more VMs per host than any other HCI system that is not integrated into the hypervisor. In fact, we support up to 500 VMs per host uh, within the latest version of vSAN. But not only that, we can provide this performance in a much more consistent uh, way as well because of that deep integration. This ability to scale up and scale out uh, is often not possible using a traditional storage arrays. This means that users can strategically design their vSAN powered cluster to accommodate their growth that best reflects the needs of the organization. And you can do so in a very incremental and strategic way. Now vSAN offers a number of data services to help address your organization's unique needs. While vSAN can run hundreds of VMs per host in a vSAN cluster, additional data services um, are available to extend the functionality of vSAN. Uh, take, for example, the vSAN iSCSI uh, target service, where you can create an iSCSI target on vSAN so that legacy workloads uh, running an application can mount that iSCSI volume. Or perhaps your organization needs file services. vSAN file services offer the ability to create SMB or NFS shares to work with both traditional and cloud native workloads. vSAN also offers native S3 compatible object storage. This comes through the use of third party certified solutions as a part of the VMware vSAN data persistence platform or a DPP. And finally, vSAN offers uh, the ability to ensure the highest levels of security through data at rest encryption and data in transit encryption offerings. These are embedded into the hypervisor and work seamless with all of these services and capabilities. All of this adds up to a highly flexible and robust and secure storage solution. Now, administrators responsible for the health and well being of an environment have to have a lot to think about. In vSAN, uh, VMware has developed an, a, a new cluster health status and a troubleshooting a dashboard. This is going to help answer the basic question of, is my cluster and the workloads it serves in a healthy state? And if not, how severe actually is the condition and how should the issue be resolved? It really provides the information that traditional health alerts alone uh, cannot. For each vSAN cluster, the Skyline Health for vSAN will provide a quick at-a-glance score of conditions of a cluster so that an administrator can easily determine if all is good or not and how impactful uh, an identified issue is. The new mechanism uses a sophisticated method of weighing triggered health checks and aligns with common pillars of responsibility for IT. It then provides the most important impactful triggered health check in an order of priority so that an administrator can focus 
on what is most important now and resolve issues quickly and easily. Now vSAN supports all different types of workloads and uh, topologies. You can run business critical applications alongside other applications or uh, carve out clusters focused on specific application requirements. Whether they be VDI workloads or uh, business uh, critical workloads, uh, cloud native applications or uh, common IT service workloads. Not only can you meet the needs of those applications, but the flexibility of the architecture uh, really allows you to deliver those services in many different ways. You can house them in a central data center uh, or perhaps stretch the cluster that spans two physical or uh, geographic sites. Maybe an organization has several branch offices or uh, perhaps they want the flexibility to expand resources by using the cloud. vSAN can meet all of those demands and more, all by using a single management plane, vCenter server. This is all within VMware Cloud Foundation. Now, as we mentioned, vSAN offers the ability to uh, build out a cluster in an aggregated vSAN HCI uh, topology where you're aggregating the compute and storage resources into the same hosts that make up a single cluster, or you can disaggregate them uh, where you have independent storage provided by a vSAN storage cluster that provides the storage services to vSphere clusters. Now, which one is right for you? Well, the circumstances or requirements you have in your environment may vary uh, based off of one deployment uh, versus another, or it may favor one deployment versus another. But in most cases, it doesn't mean that one specific deployment should be excluded from consideration. Uh, the decision may come down to a unique set of considerations or a personal preference. Uh, you can choose them to run them side by side if you wish. Regardless, vSAN Express Storage Architecture will power all of those uh, deployment options uh, within a, uh, a VCF instance. Now, some of these key considerations oftentimes comes down to the overall capacity needs. Uh, do, is your compute growing at a much higher rate than your storage or vice versa? Uh, and what are the topologically, or what are the uh, topology uh, constraints that you have in your environment? Whatever is chosen, vSAN uh, clusters can uh, coexist easily, uh, and this simply offers you the flexibility to design uh, an environment based off of the needs of your business and not the constraints of the solution. So we've talked a lot about vSAN Express storage architecture, but what really makes it so unique? Well, when we think about uh, the vSAN Express storage architecture, the best way to think of it is, is that it provides a new way for vSAN to process and store the data in a really fast and efficient way. Our, our new fast and efficient data path really uh, is, is paired with this new resilient uh, data structure that gives our users the ability to store and access the data uh, in a really fast and efficient way. But it also provides new capabilities like a brand new snapshot engine that uh, meets tremendous levels of performance and scalability never seen before in any kind of an environment. And finally, vSAN uh, and with the express storage architecture uh, makes administering an environment much easier. We've removed some of the challenges that may have existed in the original storage architecture. Using vSAN ESA is part of the hypervisor that you already know, and it's easy. Now, the vSAN express storage architecture certainly allows customers to provide a platform that serves and stores the data faster and more efficient than ever before. But of course, it's not just about performance and efficiency. It's about having a platform that demonstrates the agility needed to support a variety of scenarios and use cases while making sure that it's easy and intuitive to deploy, operate, uh, and optimize. So there you have it. Uh, with all the new capabilities and integration into VCF, it's clear that vSAN is the premier storage platform for VMware Cloud Foundation. So ask yourself the question, you've trusted the hypervisor to manage your workloads for many, many years. Why not let them it manage your storage? And since vSAN is really a part of the hypervisor and 
the licensing that you have already purchased. So it makes sense. Why not use it? NVSAN allows you to manage and protect your workloads at a VM level for unprecedented levels of control, visibility, and protection. 